Hey there, how you doing? It's Chris, your friendly neighborhood internet sherpa, back again with another one of those tips on how to use the internet to bring bodies through the door, put cheeks in the seats, and of course, build your list. Today, I want to have a quick conversation with you about social media. Specifically, I want to talk about how to make a social media strategy. And the reason I want to have this conversation is because, well, that's the same reason I have all of my conversations with you. Something happened this week in the course of doing what it is that I do, and it made sense for me to get it out to you because, well, it's just good information. Now, one of my longtime website clients called me, and we were having a little chit chat about social media. Most of what we've done in the past was website and uh, SEO type stuff, but I'm her resident geek, and what she wanted to talk about specifically was the company she had hired to do her social media stuff. Seems she was a little dissatisfied with the stuff they were putting on her timeline. And it's the stuff you see all over the place these days, mostly photo posts with a funny phrase or inspirational quote or something like that on them. Nothing major. But she said that it's stuff that she would never put on her own timeline for herself. Well, that led to an interesting conversation. There's a couple of layers there. But I'll save you the long drawn out blah, 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 blah. What I will tell you is that we eventually got around to the subject of social media strategy, what it is and how you create one. And this is an easy conversation to have because what she was going through was the very definition of what not having a social media strategy looks like. Filling up your timeline with no particular rhyme or reason, that's not really a set recipe for success. That's just doing social media for the sake of doing social media. <laughs> it's kind of like marching in place if you're in the military. You look like you're doing something, but you're not really going anywhere. Now here's the thing, my client has 20-20 vision. She may not exactly know what a social media strategy looks like, but she knew that whatever was happening on her Facebook feed, that wasn't it. So we start our conversation at the beginning. What do you need for a social media strategy? Well, here's the deal. If you're going to put your business on social, you probably should have some sort of a plan. I mean, the whole social media thing isn't new anymore. You don't get points just for showing up. The only reason you have your business on social is because you're trying to accomplish some sort of a business goal. You need people to know that your business exists? Cool, social media can do that. Got a product or service that needs just a little bit more traction? Yeah, social media can do that as well. You want people to feel some kind of way about your business? You guessed it, social media can do that too. Just about any marketing thing that you need to do, well, social media can help you with it. But just like everything else in your marketing toolbox, it doesn't just happen. You need a goal, you need a plan, and then you gotta do the darn thing. You gotta execute that plan. So let's run through what goes into your plan. Your social media strategy is the handrail that you're gonna be using to craft your social voice. And we've already hit on the first thing you need, and that's, a, of course, a goal. What is it that you're trying to accomplish out there? Now, if we're doing the five W's, that would be the why. What we need to hit next is who. Who exactly is it that you're trying to talk to? And that gets back to the, the avatar, uh, avatar thing that we talk about from time to time, that fictional representation of your ideal customer. Next, before we start getting busy doing stuff, we need to turn on the scoreboard. You gotta be able to measure your efforts. Otherwise, how do you know if what you're doing is working? I mean, if you don't measure what you're doing, you're kind of back doing social media for the sake of doing social media. Well, the nice thing about most social platforms they got a back office, and you can actually see what's going on. You can see your engagement, see your impressions. You can kind of see how people are reacting to the stuff that you're putting out there. What are they liking, commenting on? What are they sharing? And from there, you can decide what uh, if you want to stay the course or change things up a little bit. Now, the next question for crafting your social media strategy is kind of a biggie. Which platform do you need to be on? And how much should you post? Now, you may be one of those folks that likes to spread the goodness all across the internet, many platforms as you can. And if that's you, do me a favor, don't. I mean, it's a recipe for disaster. You're gonna dilute your efforts, because you can't be everywhere. Well, you can, you just can't do it well. And even if you hire someone to do the heavy lifting, you're gonna be paying some hefty cheddar to get them to try to be everywhere. Yeah, not, not really a good thing. Of course, if you absolutely just have to be omnipresent, I don't want to slow you down. I mean, you do you, boo. Just do me one favor. Turn on the scoreboard, and that way you can see how much bang for the buck or the lack thereof that you're getting. All right, now, we all know, oh, wait a minute, let me not assume, we probably all know 
that there's different strokes for different folks and there's different platforms for different demographics. Now, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure your granny's not hanging out on TikTok. Your niece, maybe, granny, eh, probably not. So uh, I guess it really depends on where you hang out, where your audience tends to be, who you're trying to talk to. Whatever platform is the most popular with your target audience, probably the one you need to be on. Whew, all right, so I'm talking kind of fast. Hope it's not too bad, but we've covered a lot of ground. Now we need to dig into the weeds just a little. What kind of content are you going to be putting out? And this kind of gets back to what it is you're trying to accomplish. Some pieces of content are better suited for different types of approaches. Now, in my book, everything always comes back to know, like, and trust. People like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. If you want people to spend cheddar with you, they need to know you, like you, but most importantly, they need to trust you. So, are you primarily shooting for the know, the like, or the trust? If you're going for the no, then send them back office stuff. I'm talking about behind the scenes, pull the curtain back, video posts, image posts, whatever. Show them what's going on in the store, what you actually do to get from your Monday to Sunday. Show them how the gumbo is made. That way, they'll get to know you and they'll go, okay, I got you. You're a real life person. I mean, think about it. We love reality TV. So, show them some reality. Maybe boring to you, but you'd be surprised. It's fascinating to the folks that are in your audience. It's just the way it is. Now, if you're going for that like type stuff, well, then you go ahead and push out that fluffy stuff, you know, with the comments and the th something to make them smile. Let them see your sense of humor. But you might want to make sure that your sense of humor matches up with your ideal customer because that strategy, depending on how quirky you happen to be, that can go south really, really fast. Just saying. Finally, if you're going for trust, and you should, then you got to educate them. Word posts with helpful tips and link posts pointing back to a good content on your website. Things to make them smarter as a consumer, as a shopper, just to make them all in all more versed in what it is that you do so they know that you're trying, that you're on their side. You, you have the best in mind for them. Whichever goal is the one that means the most for your business, wherever you happen to be at right now, that's the one to lean on the heaviest. And that's going to drive the train on what it is you're trying to do with your social. All right, so let's see. You got your social media strategy and you know what kind of things go into it. Who you're talking to, what platforms you need to be on, what is it you're trying to get done, and how are you going to measure what you're doing. Those are the things that you need to consider before you start you know, plastering all the goodness all over the internet. Now, before I bump out of here, you know how I do. You got to talk about the asset. And by the asset, I mean your list. If you're having a hard time coming up with a goal, as unlikely as that is, but just in case, if you're having a hard time coming up with a goal, may I suggest adding build your list to the top. And even if you already have a goal, put build your list on there anyway. It's just too much goodness going on there. Now, how do you do that? Well, you got a couple of options. You got a bunch of options. You know, your, 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 your um, shall we say, your creativity is your only limit. However, start with curiosity. Create content. Slap it on your social media feed, wherever it happens to be, and things that your audience would be interested in. Don't give them the whole thing. Just give them a hook. Just a, just a little tender, tasty morsel. Put some of it on your social media. Put the rest of it on your website. Put a link from social media going over to your website. And then don't send them to the homepage. Send them to a landing page. A landing page that has a contact form on it, something they can opt in for to get the rest of the goodness. You can do that with a regular post. You can do that with ads. You can do a post and boost it. You can get your stuff in front of them. The key is curiosity. The key, the key is getting the eyeballs on it. It's not that hard. So here's what I need you to do. I want you to take a look at your social media. Step back and take a look at what you got going on right now. Can you see some kind of organized effort? Can you see a goal? Can you see where it kind of makes sense, what you're doing, what you're trying to get to? Or... Are you just doing social media for the sake of those social media? If you're not quite sure how to get that all organized and all that good stuff, you know the deal. Time to back up, regroup, and come at it again. And if you need help with the backup, regroup, and coming at it again, just give me a call, 702-582-6708, or set up a Zoom call, chriscarter.net slash appointments. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Those are always fun conversations. 
All right, I think that's going to do it. So until next time, thank you for uh, throwing your attention at me for just a little while, and I'll talk to you next time.